On this episode of Resi Week, Snap AV to go public. IMCCA is joining Cedia Expo and Biamp for work from home. All this and more on this episode of Resi Week. The network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. This. This is AV Nation. Nation. This is AV Nation. This is Resi Week, episode 276, Bubble Up Solutions. Support for AV Nation is brought to you by Daylight, the leading producer of high-quality projection screens worldwide. Welcome to this episode of Resi Week. This is your weekly roundup of all the latest news and stories for the residential AV industry. I'm your host, Matt D. Scott, for AV Nation. Dot TV, And this week, I'm pleased to be joined by two of my good friends. First, we have Mr. Ken Eagle. He's the Senior Global Director of Training for Athlona. How you doing, Ken? Awesome. Thanks, Matt. Good to be here. Thank you for joining us. And we have Richard Uncle Richie Fergosa. He's the principal at Fergosa Design. How you doing, Uncle Richie? Good. Mellow West Coast greetings. It's uh, getting warmer out here. It's baseball season. Having a good time. Yeah, we're not getting baseball season this year up here. Go Braves. Who are the Braves? Braves Atlanta. The Braves. The Braves. Yeah. Unfortunately, the team that Toronto just pounded. <laughs> I did actually see that, which which impressed me. Unfortunately, I did too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm a Yankee fan and we suck this year, so there's that. All kinds of good stuff. But you didn't come to the show to listen to baseball, uh, and if you did, well... We can talk about that later. But let's kick this off with a story that comes to us from CE Pro. Snap AV is planning to go public. They've filed their IPO registration with the SEC. The number of shares and that price range has not yet been determined. Uh, This is a, I don't want to say this is an interesting story, but it is an interesting story because they, uh, Snap AV purchased Control 4 after they were public and brought them back to private so they could purchase them, yada, yada, yada. And now they are planning to go public, which is really a, a, just a huge uh, ascent for, for the North Carolina company. Ken, when you see this, there's obviously a lot of things that go into a planning to go public, actually going public and, and being a public company. But let's focus on that last part, being a public company, when they go public, if they do decide to follow through with their IPO, does that change the makeup of how and and, and the manner in which Snap AV has been run and how they work with integrators? Maybe, maybe. I mean, it's a big company. There's so much going on. The thing is, their formula for working with integrators has kind of been unique in the industry, and it's been their point of success. So I think they got to be careful about how much they affect that because that could have implications on how successful they continue to be. You want to keep that same kind of momentum going. So I think they're going to have to watch that internally behind the scenes. Yeah, there's, you know, there's different management, there's different power, there's different, there's different, um, you know, uh, motivation for stockholders who are involved Mm -hmm. now. So that's going to change some things that's going to have influence. It's going to be market influences that they're going to need to be more aware of now. Uh, things like that. Um, but essentially, I, I think I, I'm pretty excited about this. I thought it was a pretty neat story when it when it just broke. Um, you know, I was told a long time ago, if you're going to invest in something, invest in something that you're passionate about. Mm-hmm. And if there's one thing that we are collectively in the AV industry, it's passionate. I mean, yeah. let's be honest, most of us are in here because we have a passion for AV at some point. Very few of us can say we went to college and studied AV and pursued a degree in a career in that field, right? We got here because we liked it. We're passionate about doing this and working with AV. And so Snap AV has got an audience uh, that's very passionate about being in the AV industry. And I think they're going to be passionate about this opportunity to continue to be a customer of Snap AV and maybe at some point and a partial owner, a participant mm-hmm. in Snap AV. So I think it does, to your question, change it just a little bit because I think you got a lot more opinions and a lot more potential people with passion who want to be part of the excitement. Yeah, very good. Richie, when you when you follow this, um, I, I'm cautiously optimistic about this. Obviously, uh, being a private company, they don't disclose sales numbers. They don't disclose 
profit margins, all of that stuff, which will very quickly become public uh, when this goes through. I don't foresee a lot of issues with that just based on what I know of their their business model. But we also watched Control 4 go public and then work on innovation. But while working on innovation, innovate by acquisition. Snap's been huge in the acquisition market. Do you forecast after their IPO that they will become even bolder in acquisitions? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's what we're seeing is it was a natural evolution of where Snap was just, they evolved to the point that it made sense. There's how many companies in the CI channel are able to say that? Mm -hmm. um, we're not going to see much difference in terms of the day to day, how dealers, you know, order product, how they interact with ordering and customer service and everything. You know, I mean, what we are going to want to keep an eye on is what the long term plan is. You know, how are they going to be operating? Because, again, when you start out as a private company and a founder based company, um, it's like Ken was saying, your, found, your, your, your DNA comes from passion. And a public company can be passionate. There's now the and responsible to the shareholders. So everything that is now used with Snap AV in the future will be, well, we've looked at this company in effort to be providing value to the shareholders in order to grow the stock price. You know, there's going to be a whole lot of unspokens across the decisions that are made. And so the amount of revenue that they're creating and you know going public just made total sense from a business standpoint. Um, do you potentially start losing some, DNA, some of the DNA and the mind share and what happens with the smaller companies that were founder based and were operating within? Um, will they retain that passion for the CI industry? And, and that really does become the question is does Snap AV finally determine that, you know, we're moving enough stuff that the smaller CI industry, eh, we'll take them or leave them. We've got bigger fish to fry now. And so they are now potentially leveraging themselves to operate in a market with a Best Buy, mm -hmm. with a larger uh, e-tailer, uh, because they're going to have the, the roadmap and they're going to have the product and they're going to build the alliances to to grow that business and so you know for the ci industry you, you know it's we're you know, the nostalgic part of me goes yeah you know custom is custom itself is is becoming more antiquated there'll always be bespoke mm -hmm. but that margin is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking so now it's a matter of as this industry has evolved how can you appeal to the mass market to continue your business survival because again Snap AV caters to the CI industry. The CI industry is made up of small custom installation companies. So really that's going to be a matter of how are these custom installation companies going to adapt with Snap not necessarily becoming a competitor, but you're seeing it in the marketplace now. The manufacturers that CI dealers are working with are becoming more and more direct competitors. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so so I you know I think long term in terms of the roadmap, yeah, I, I could see a Snap AV for home portal at some point, where you know kind of kind of where the gray area where Monoprice operates. You yeah. know, you could see Snap AV saying, hey, you know, buy this product and in your geographic area here are fifteen. You know, the Amazon model, right? Here yeah. are fifteen companies who are Snap AV dealers who can go ahead and have been trained on this. We can provide your installation services. So. You know, it is just another indicator of, of how the industry is changing and, and how, as a CI dealer, are you going to embrace it and adapt with it? Yeah, we saw that a lot with, with Sonos as well when they went public. it They had to change some of their directions a little bit and, and really push that, that um, direct-to-consumer model to satisfy Wall Street. So, yeah. What does it look Loyalty is fungible when you're dealing with shareholders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shareholders. But you might be able to own a piece. So there you go.
Hey, thanks for watching the first segment of this week's episode. To catch the entire show, please click the link below or visit avnation.tv. That's avnation.tv.